go live. I normally would do. Now I've started streaming to to TikTok as well. I don't do the um the little go live segment. Okay, right. And I'll switch to where stream elements gone. There it is. Okay, right. So oh, also, real quick, we, we uh, if live. I just we, we are live. Whatever you say. Now he's oh, live. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Fine. Well, then we'll start this off with. Hey, if I disappear, we are having a windstorm. So if the power drops out, that's what's up. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I should have brought that up earlier. Yeah, probably should have said you could have messaged me earlier and been like, "Hey, do you want to do this live if we got a windstorm?" Well, I mean, yeah, the power has been flickering, so you know. Yeah. We haven't even discussed how regularly we got to do the show yet. That's how set on professional we are. Yeah, but we are live right now. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, yeah. Anyways, guys, um, welcome, oh, cool. welcome to the first episode of Trip into History with me, History Daddy, and my co-host Trip Ainsworth. Hello. Who's recently Eight. just published his sixth book? Tenth. 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 Oh yeah. Tenth. Tenth. Yeah. And they're full length novels too. They're not those little fucking uh like romance smut novellas they're they're all about a hundred thousand words so i've, I've noticed book top, you've been bullying book talk one by one yeah well you know book talks its own fucking thing but anyway since since we're talking about what well we're talking about sea snatch today yeah, the right sea, the sea, the sea um, maidens i've clearly correctly put it in on yeah, YouTube. Sea snatch is um you know it's an alliteration and i yeah. apologize before and because this is not going to be a fucking monetized. Oh no, this is yeah. this this is this is not gonna be. Okay, but 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 giving given the opportunity, would you rather bang a chick that was fish up top and girl on the bottom, or girl up top and fish on the bottom? Girl up top, I think. Yeah, because like you, you know they don't have like the appropriate hole, so they just kind of like lay eggs, and you have to go on the yeah, eggs. Yeah, the afterwards. amount of stories this has happened. Like what I've learned from looking into this is the amount of times this has happened with a variation of combination of fish parts and seal parts and human parts it's clearly there is a possible way to do it <laughs> well you know like the starbucks siren you know she's got two tails so yeah. like there's gonna be a butt back there yeah i'm assuming that there is some function but i, I yeah. also my my favorite thing with this as a whole um is the fact that so many sailors like and, and fishermen as well because with sailors at least you can say oh i've been at sea a while so if you know you see a, a you see a, a mermaid or a manatee or something you're gonna be like oh yeah okay but the fishermen just like the amount with the selkies especially there's stories of the fishermen in like scotland and orkney just walking along and they see a selkie woman and they're like gonna gonna have a she's literally a seal she takes off the skills costume and then there's a woman inside just gonna have a crack at that there's other women. There's human women here, but I'm gonna have to go for the seal. Well, you know that like fishermen are responsible for tentacle fucking hente, right? I thought that was just Japan after you guys nuked him a couple oh, times. There's an, old, there's an old old poem called something like the the dream of the fisherman's wife, where the fisherman brings home like a full net, but like doesn't let the fish all suffocate in the air, I guess. But there's an octopus in there and you know, I don't remember if Fisherman goes out again or if he just gets drunk and passes out, but the uh octopus is still alive and uh has his way with the fisherman's wife. <sighs> oh but again this just adds to it because literally it just proves that fishermen and their wives will shake anyone and anything. Well, think about this, though, because, like, uh, for most of history in most cultures, like, you didn't take women to fucking see. Like, you didn't. It was either bad luck yeah. or, you know, some stereotype like, oh, yeah, women are physically weaker and we need people to, you know, can actually man the rails to, you know, pull the line. So, you know, we're going to only take dudes because we also have so many spots on ship and, like, we need to be the most efficient we can. So you get these dudes that go out to sea for a long time, don't see women for weeks months years at a time yeah. so obviously they're gonna be a little bit more horned up vice you know the guy that stays on land and like at least sees women every day like we had this thing um like when i was when i was on ship we'd call it uh um sea goggles um because it's like all right well i haven't seen a chick in however friggin long and like you know we had women you know on, on the ships i was on but like you know they were few and far between so it like ones were all tens like no dude and it got bad too because um i was I had, I had a buddy and uh you know we'd badger back and forth like we, we, we had the yeah we were at the point in the in our, our friendship where like we only insulted each other you know because that's how fucking you know conversations yeah, that's, work that's when how you, guy friendships work 
but anyway, we're, we're, we've been out at sea for however long. We're at the end of the deployment. We're coming back to Hawaii, and because uh, that's going to be our last stop before we get back to California. And I was like, hey, so are you ready to be ugly again? And she's like, what? I'm like, well, I mean, you know, the only reason like people are after you here is because like you're you're the only chick on this deck, so naturally they're gonna be coming after you. But we're gonna get to Hawaii where there's you know women. And she's like, oh, I hate you. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> That's so brutal. Are you ready to be ugly again? No, oh, and, and, and you know what? That, that that's what equality is because yeah, you know quality. I'd say that to you. <laughs> it's it's also funny because like. People forget for a large portion of antiquity, which was a longer period than people remember, like the medieval, like if people think of history as like, like Greeks, Romans, medieval, World War Two, like that's most people's brain how it works with history. I've, I've found it was, it was, it was cavemen, yeah. uh, Samaria, Egypt, kind of Greece, Rome. And I love the whole Greek thing because, you know, like, you know, the Greeks were this great society that, you know, invented democracy and it's like well they didn't really have a society as much as much as city states in a region that we just called greece and then they invented democracy and then immediately lost it and didn't have it again until like what 50 years ago now yep after the romans came in greece just like lost democracy because if you think about it the greeks were once the romans like conquered all of greece because obviously at that point it wasn't a unified city state like after alexander it like alexander unified it well, Alexander's dad unified it. Then he used the army to conquer Persia. But then, um, obviously, once the Romans came along, Greece was either occupied... I mean, technically, it, Greece was the Eastern Roman Empire because it was very culturally Greek. But once then you had the Ottomans. So there wasn't really a period where the nation of Greece or the people of Greece were like on their own. So they couldn't really have democracy like they used to. Yeah. Also, your microphone's peaking ever so slightly. When you, get, when, you get, when you get very impassioned. Most of the time, it's fine. When you get very impassioned, it's peaking. I'm going to turn the gain down a little bit. Again, new microphone, there people. Yeah, that's fine now. That's, new microphones are always... When I had... I, it took, took me a year to get... It just looks like I'm putting them on my dick now. <laughs> the microphone I've currently got next to me, um, which is off camera. That's what I'm pointing at, everyone. Um, that's what I'm pointing at YouTube and TikTok before you ban this live stream. Um, do, you, do you like my microphone? <laughs> do you like my big, big <laughs> girthy microphone? Um, like, you gotta get your mouth real close to my microphone. Uh, that's, don't that's let it be. You're going to see that pop up. <laughs> your DMs are just creature at some point. Um, but uh, uh, it took me like two years to get used to this microphone, like getting the settings. And I was, there was always a low hum. And I actually have an old stand for it. It's still on my desk. And ended up buying a new stand. And the main issue I had was where it was connected to the desks. The stand was vibrating, which was vibrating the microphone, which was causing the hum. And so I like the, the stand was essentially useless unless I had a separate table next to me. Yeah. But back yeah. to the Sea Maidens. So... See Obviously, the the what people don't realize is that this is a worldwide phenomenon. Like the the idea of like sirens and mermaids, that, that these stories appear in in Japan and China as well. And you actually, um, uh, I because I was I was unaware of this until earlier today. I I was I was nervous because I didn't have any knowledge of sort of any East Asian stories. And uh, in DMs, you said that you've got some idea of of some of these the the history and legends and what went on in the ports. <laughs> well, I, I got I got one that's like a legend that kind of goes into something else um, yeah. that deserves its own episode at some point, which actually we talked to you before back on the History Daddy Chats, um, yeah, so yeah. I won't go too deep into it. Um, and then I was going to talk about... Uh, I just had uh, live age restricted on my It just had age restricted from TikTok. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, yeah. And so, but uh, in Japanese Sea Witch, um, there's this, uh, you know, Japanese sea witch, you know, Baba Yaga, you know, Hansel and Gretel witch type character in Japan, but, you know, she's a sea witch instead of a mountain witch or a forest witch or whatever, yeah. um, you know, comes up, you know, eats children, you know, all the X, Y, Z, whatever. But what's interesting about her is people still have experiences about getting chased by this sea witch. What's and that? they've done studies like, on this. Yeah, I don't know, like, like, it still happens. Um, but when the, the people have studies about this and they'll be in the, you know, psychologist, you know, chair hooked up to all the nodes and yeah. stuff, you know, when they get abducted by the sea witch. But the stuff that's going on in their brain is the same thing that's going on in Westerners' brains when we think we're getting abducted by aliens. 
which kind of plays into it because uh, there's so why I, I've always been deep in like the alien like UFO thing and also if you look at the sightings if you overlay the map of the sightings they also overlay onto a map of all the US caves just bringing it up completely random um, but more and more of the sightings that are coming out that, uh, that as people are diving into it most of those sightings the ships come out of water yeah which like so I mean Maybe the the sea witch is a bit extraterrestrial, but the, I mean, obviously, and according to some stories, well, they mean, like to expect. Gotta, well, we're just predisposed to you know have a certain chemical process that makes us imagine that specific. Or just like experience. But it's way it's weird that that. I mean, I suppose it's like DMT because there's. Um, uh, <laughs> I love how we can take any topic and turn it into like here's a weird psycho psychological drug effect. <laughs> and, right. um, but there's um, there was a guy who took. I'm gonna see some DMT and go fuck this sea witch real quick. Yeah, yeah. See you guys on the side. <laughs> Literally, there was there was a couple of guys who um, they t so this one first guy he took DMT and um, he in, like had this entire like world and he he went to a carnival in this other world and he met a woman and he had a relationship with her and then obviously the trip ended and he came out of the world. A few years later, bear in mind, he never told anyone about this because, you know, it's not you, you can't really go to people. Hey, I've been taking DMT because you, you'll probably end up in prison, <laughs> like depending on where in the world you are. So, um, yeah, his friend was um, like taking DMT and he was like the safety guy there to make sure that his friend didn't like completely trip out and like right, throw right, himself right. off a building. Um, so the friend starts talking uh, the friend starts talking about this woman, and he's saying, "Oh yeah, she's asking about you." Like, so he's in the trip, but he's also like cognizant. He's saying, "This woman's like asking me to to talk about like you and wants to talk to you." And he's, uh, but the, the the issue, the thing, the weird thing was the first guy never told his friend about that woman or like his trip. And it's always hmm. made me think. It, it get I I, I, I I try not to talk about it too much because people always start going. They just look at me and they're like, Ryan, you're getting real Alex Jones right now. You're getting real Alex Jones machine elves. And I'm like, they're saying to it. They're saying, which which link I think links in to like what you're saying with the, the same chemical reaction of the sea witch and the aliens is yeah. maybe we maybe we can like our brains can tap into some other dimension. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like we can either we it either creates some joint psychosis or there's like another dimension we're tapping into. Yeah, I've yeah. waited no, but, too much. You sound like Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but then the other thing though too is like Southeast Southeast Asian culture. So like, um, you know, the Vietnam, Laos, um, mm. Indonesia, that area, the Pacific area. Um, you know, obviously, you know, they have like vastly different you know cultural norms than we do. Um, so, like, you know, like, uh, sex and, like, say, prostitution in general is not looked at the same way. Yeah. So, like, for instance, here, like, you know, a woman, you know, goes to be a hooker or, you know, goes on OnlyFans. And then, like, some people are, are, are all about it. But for the most part, it's like, ah, you friggin' slut, how dare you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, like, over, like, obviously there is some of that over there. But there's also more, uh... It's also more culturally accepted, especially if you're doing it for a reason that's not you. Like, say, hey, listen, I got to go be a hooker to support my family. And it's like, oh, dude, good on you. You're doing God's work. You know, yeah. taking care of your family. So because of that, they um, they export a lot of, uh, you know, say, like, prostitution. Um, now, granted, there is some human trafficking, you know, involved in that. Like, you're not going to get away from that and that type of thing. But also because of that everywhere you go on the planet... Where there is a port city, there is Thai and Filipino hookers. You go to the Philippines, naturally they're there. You go to Japan, Filipino hookers. You go to Malaysia, Filipino hookers. Hong Kong, Filipino hookers. Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Spain, Mexico, Filipino hookers. So like they kind of get exported that way. Um, and it, it, it's kind of funny too because of that. Also, this is kind of where like the whole like lady boy thing comes in. Yeah, and. Also, internet. I'm not being culturally insensitive by not calling them trans. They call themselves lady boys. I am using their preferred fucking pronoun. Fuck off. Anyway, um, no, no, because if you ask, was hey, you yeah. boy or girl? I'm a boy. It's like that's the, the third, third sex, third gender, whatever yeah. you want to fucking call it. So I mean, that's there's, their... mul there's multiple TikToks account from Thai lady boys who will call it, like get angry when they're not called lady boys. Like this is this is my thing. This is what I want to be called. Leave yeah. Me alone. yeah, but um. 
So, you know, I spent some you know time in the Marines and, you know, I spent a couple deployments on ship where you're going around bouncing around from, you know, port to port. Mm-hmm. And uh, I uh, got to be good buddies with uh, this hooker in, fuck, I think we were in Malaysia for this. Might have been Hong Kong or Singapore. I don't remember. Um, didn't bang her, though. Um, but, like, because well, the, the way, like, a lot of the, like, whorehouses mm-hmm. are set up over there um, is you have a bar and then either you pay $75 for two or three drinks and then you get the bang a chick for free so it's not prostitution you're just paying way too much for drinks Loopholes. Or, Loophole. or you know drinks are like 25 cents and they just the, the point is you know you, you just get good and liquored up so like you're okay with you know fucking whatever but i am uh i don't want to say a functional alcoholic because that implies that um i'm an alcoholic and i'm not and I don't abuse alcohol. I teach it a fucking lesson. <laughs> <laughs> so in my head, it's like, dude, quarter beers. I'm going there. I'll talk. I'll fucking talk to the hookers. I don't give a shit. Fucking. I'm mean, not banging them because I don't want to get the fucking black syphilis. But you know, whatever. But uh, <laughs> the uh, little piece of advice for people traveling around the world, especially if you're going to engage with uh, ladies of the night. <laughs> wait, we, wait, wait, ladies of the bright sunshine, because it is hotter than fuck in those areas, because it's in the tropics. Two things you need to do. First off, when you're making out with her, you need to lick up her chin to make sure you don't taste any stubble. The second <laughs> one is when you're fingering her, you gotta make sure there's a clit down there, because if she's born a girl, she'll have a clit. <laughs> TikTok's currently sitting there like, can we extra age restrict them? Can we? <laughs> Oh, uh, I, I remember setting up the stream and I was like, this is good. There's no way this doesn't get demonetized and age restricted immediately. Listen, 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 when you get canceled for this, remember, you invited me here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When we get, it's fine. We're not streaming it live to Twitter. We, actually, we should actually know Twitter's not too bad now for cancellations. It's, um, yeah. uh, Fred's. Oh, wait, no, no one uses Fred's. Um, little jab on Zuckerberg. It doesn't matter because he's billions of pounds richer than me. Um, but yeah, no, you have like the the um the sort of the the phrases of like um any any ports you know any ports a, a safe refuge in a storm sort of thing that that comes up, which comes from sailors, and I can I I I can see how you know if you're traveling like especially back then because Hong Kong has always been a, a a port city and has always been that sort of time. So you can imagine yeah. if you're in the East India Company when we're still using wooden ships. Right, obviously the East India Company was very bad for someone like I get loads of DMs and comments about I've been over this a million times, I don't like the East India Company. Yeah, but that's a different thing. <laughs> yeah. Um you know the East India Company's bad when the British Empire went in after when they took over India from the East India Company it was like, oh shit, we need to we need all oh, we need to fix some things. Um Well and, and it's kinda of too not to get too far into the rabbit hole, but like there are arguments to be at least entertained that the East India Company was more influential for world affairs than Britain was. Yeah, the East India. Um, a lot of the atrocities. Yeah, the British and Empire just point of, matter, or, or, um, point of matter, real quick, is the East India Trading Company's flag is looks suspiciously like the American flag, and it's like, well, well I wonder why we didn't use like the base ours off the Union Jack. Why did we base it off of the East India Trading Companies? That's that's weird. No, Susan B. Anthony came up with this. All by herself. That's why the there's 13 stripes and a blue banner. Um, <laughs> conspiracy fear. I want this to go, end up on conspiracy TikTok in like two months. So I'm just looking at you like you've started an entire new conspiracy theory on the formation of the United States with actually the East India Company getting angry. <laughs> listen, listen, we, we've had enough of your shit, England. We're going to go start a new country and uh, totally not use them as a puppet state to keep doing our shit, you fucking assholes. Yeah, which... To be fair, would be in the East India Company's MO. But I mean, like, like I say, I always say, a lot of the atrocities committed under the British Empire were actually committed under the East India Company. Yeah. But um, the the you know, empires are still bad, guys. Government is bad. Anyways, back to the t- back to the topic at hand. Sea snatches. <laughs> yeah, the sea snatches. Um, like Hong Kong at that point. So imagine you've just got off a, a wooden ship. All you've sat with is a bunch of smelly guys from like 
like you know like Cardiff Birmingham just sitting there you like all just had arguments the entire entire way Jeff was starting to look quite tasty halfway through the voyage because you've sat there you've been in India for five months so you're in a, a like a land you don't know and you're getting to rest up in Hong Kong because you need to go and resupply and then out of nowhere comes this mystical like <laughs> like Filipino hooker who's just like yep I will I will risk it and then you come home and um there's a syphilis outbreak in the UK. Like <laughs> yeah, a few months later. Right. Well, the other thing is that it break out on ship too, because uh, are you familiar with the term like underway? Yes. Okay. Well, it's not gay if you're underway. Yeah. There, because that's the other reputation is that all, all sailors um they they play for both teams at the very minute. <laughs> they they don't play for both teams. All right, it's just not gay if you're underway. Like yeah. like I'm I'm not doing any of that homosexual crap. All right, like I'm. Me banging Bob over here, that's different. We're at sea, okay? Yeah. It's not... Yeah, it doesn't count at sea. It doesn't count. That, but then you just around like, we've we've been anchored. We've been in port for two days. You guys you guys didn't know it. Well, like, uh, like uh, in the Golden Age of Piracy, that was a big thing, too. Um, a lot of pirates. So, like, you know, two, two male pirates would get married a lot. Um, yeah. Now, granted, sometimes they were banging, sometimes they weren't. Um, it was more of a like a legal contract thing, but they were like legally married in the eyes of I don't know the pirates, the ship captain. Yeah, which you know is still like still now uh, in most countries a ship captain can legally marry you. Um, but like they would do the shit where it would be like, all right, so like say you and me get married on ship and I die, then you get like I don't know whatever my version of a health insurance policy is, so and then like we the, share shares. So it's very all that similar kind of stuff. to the, the Spartan buddy buddy system, like where like you'd fight harder if the guy next to you was your lover, sort of thing. Yeah, except for like, you know, like sometimes they'd be banging, sometimes they weren't. But records do show that the two guys that were married would also double up on the same hooker at the same time a lot when they were in port. So it was like, well, you're at least doing that. Yeah, we're we're not breaking the marriage vows technically. <laughs> Um, Dirty pirate hookers. Speaking of marriage vows, we'll go into the um, which I think is like the the the. So in Orkney, my one of my favourite places in the UK because the the folklore is so unhinged. Like I've got an entire video on a knuckle of e, which is like a sea demon. That's like it's a it's a rider who's fused into the horse. The horse has like one eye, or sometimes the rider has one eye. It's just flesh with black oozing veins and blood, and it all just all it like entire purpose is like. Um, the um, Wi uh, William Trowell Dennison, I believe his name is, um, he described it as basic. This creature's entire being is to just screw with humans. All it wants to do is just kill your livestock. It wants to like murder your children, and it will just. There's only one um story where someone ever met it as well. So normally, like the stories are old, old. Like that, you know, the fables when the start of every like mystic fantasy movie like the dragons were seen over the mountains 400 years ago like that sort of thing but they the only trail was a far a, a former farmhand and he was walking home one evening and um he saw like a searchlight ahead of him so he like straightened up thinking he was going to get you know roughed up by a bunch of drunk guys because he was fairly drunk as well um and then uh he notices Whatever's coming towards him is coming towards him fast and it's big. So he just literally does what anyone would do in that situation. He just looks up to God and he goes, I'm really, really sorry for like debasing myself and being a degenerate. Can I please, please, please not die? And then like he always he just immediately had the urge and he like he was gonna stand his ground and he was like, I can't. So he starts sprinting and then jumps over a creek. And as he like turns round, he feels something like grab where well, he does see it, so he looks back and he's like, Oh, there's a massive mutant horse rider thing like coming after me. The claws of it grab his hat or his bonnet and like rip the bonnet. And as he looks back, he just sees the bonnet like hanging from this thing's claws and it's screaming because it won't go over the stream because it hates fresh water. So that's the only time it won't come out is in the rain or in the summer. Um, but like, yeah, I never understood the fresh water thing. Like, I'm sure there's a reason for that. I just haven't taken the rabbit hole on it but like that, that that's not a unique thing to that guy or that that creature there's there's a lot of won't crop like vampires won't do it sometimes the headless yeah. horseman would do it like see that's what i need to bring up because the headless horseman is an american one isn't it it's specifically american if i'm not right. um yes and no so there is an american headless horseman and that one's the most famous one but yeah. there's also a bunch of them in germany and scotland and um 
a few other fucking parts of the world. Yeah. Like it, it's not unique to the Americans. It's just the most famous one. Kind of like how like we have the best Bigfoot or yeah. the most famous Bigfoot. Yeah. Like there are other ape ape monster yeah, like the Yeti. Human, yeah. Kind of, yeah. I'd say the Bigfoot and the the Yeti are the two most like again like like aliens the the whole Bigfoot yeah. thing I I've been obsessed with since. Um, yeah. But also, guys, if you're watching, make sure you share the live on both YouTube and TikTok because it pushes us in the algorithm. Otherwise, neither algorithm cares. <laughs> but um, with with the Knuckle of E, that was the only time it was like really seen, and the only way to get rid of it is to burn this particular type of seaweed. But then it will go mad and it will kill all your livestock. Like that's the only way to get rid of Knuckle V. It's not really too bad because A, it's not killing you, and B, you were gonna eat that livestock anyway, so like he did the butchering for you. Well, well, no, specifically horses rather than the cows. You ain't a horse. Yeah, I, it, depends on what part of Europe you're in. If you're in Belgium, I've eaten horse in Belgium, but not in yeah, not in the UK. What I feel like America and the UK are like the only people that like don't really eat horse. Like Spain and France are all yeah. about it. J Japan, it, it's 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 expensive in Japan because they don't have a lot of them. But like, I had it in Japan, and I mean, Japanese all sweet squid alive. Like I've seen, I've seen a video of a woman live chops get. She puts the, the squid in her mouth, and then she's like yeah, screaming because you can see it on the inside of her mouth, like the beak, like trying to claw its way out. And I'm like, I I, I don't know what you expected, my guy. You tried to eat it while it was still alive. Yeah, cook that shit first. Yeah, but. but, but... Squid, squid's good. So is whale and shark and all, all like all this shit on the endangered species list is that I've had anyway is fucking delicious. That's and so it's like well, I understand why it's going extinct yeah, because I don't want to stop eating. This. He might like the next, the next after like as as, as humanity progresses, the next series set of evolution is just going to be animals that taste disgusting to humans. Yeah, like. And that's what's gonna. Everyone thinks, oh, we're gonna like the Americans will like explore space looking for oil. It won't be. It will just be humans looking for tasty things to eat, <laughs> yeah. or to, or as we've learned for so far, to um uh, have relations with, um to try to, to just try and not get too age restricted. Uh, um, dude, no, and then there's a whole other level of friggin' like uh, um stereotypes and jokes because. You know, like it, it for whatever reason, it's gonna be the British that go to space instead of you know the Americans, the Russians, the Chinese, or whatever. And they go to all these different planets looking for spices, and then they bring it all back to Earth and don't fucking put it on their own food. So eat beans for breakfast, it's like bro, you found like Spice X, Spi like no, not even Spice X, Spice from Dune. You found that in real life. Put it on your fucking eggs, man. <laughs> No, that's just <laughs> the, 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 the fact of the historical relevance of that, of like the British Empire just being like, we're going to conquer a quarter of the planet. We're going to literally drag spice off of every corn corner from this globe. And actually, corner of the globe is a very funny sort of saying, now I say out loud. Um, but, and then we're not going to use any of it. And if we do use it, we're going to use all of it at once. Yeah. So you're you're either getting a boiled egg or curry that like you can't even really get in your fucking mouth. Yeah. <laughs> no middle ground. I love ground. the fact that a lot of the curries that are eaten in the UK were made in the UK specifically for British palates. Because there's a lot yeah. of in, in, like Indian migrants that came over and they were like, oh, "No one wants to eat our food. What if we, what if we just made it less spicy, and then pretended it was really spicy?" Like I know people that have eaten like proper traditional Indian food, and they're like, "This is like nothing." nothing. Dude, no, no, I'm like that too. Because so, like, um, a lot of the curry over here in the states, you know, comes from, uh, you know, like an English descent lineage of, yeah. you know, culinary fucking arts. And I always hated it. I thought it was fucking terrible. And then I was in, I think Singapore, and I had like actual Thai curry, and then I went to like little India and got India curry, and I was, and I only got it because. You know, the group I was with, you know, we went to a thing and they all wanted it. And, you know, it's one of those things you don't get a plate and just get like yeah. a like, big thing you have to share. And it's like, okay, okay, this is good. It's just, you know, the American version of it's fucking trash. But the American version of it has probably got a million pounds of sugar in it as well. That's why I've been told American, American food is always very, very sugary. That's what I've been Depends told. on where you go. Yeah. yeah. Um. It, it, and it depends on how you make. Like, like pre-made stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But like, if you go on the outside of the fucking, I don't know, supermarket and just get like, you know, the the vegetables, and the meat yourself, and make the food yourself. You know, like you're supposed to, and not eat TV fucking microwave dinners. Yeah. Then you, you, most of us don't put a lot of sugar in the shit. Um. It's just the pre-made stuff, which 
that is a fucking episode we should fucking have, um, just about, like, the history of fucking food. Happily, how it got processed and terrible. happily do that. Mm. Just complain, just going on about but, different sort of foods and, like, the foods we should bring back from ancient Greece and Rome and China and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah but anyway, Chinese that's... Invent, you know, yeah, but speaking of eating people... Yeah, um, eating people was actually what I was... I was, I was staying with Orkney, which I was like... Because one day we'll do a show where we don't get completely sidetracked. I'm, I'm sure we will. But but speaking of eating people, like sirens are notorious for singing to sailors and then eating them and shit. Um, I found out something recently, and I was looking up this for this. Um, interesting here, interesting theory about what might be the origin of sirens. Hmm. So there's an island that is on the off the west coast of. Italy, I think it's between like Italy and Corsica. Corsica is the big island that's not Sicily. That's like right by the boot, right? Um, I think so. You've so. got, you've got uh, uh, Sicily, then you've got Sardinia, and then Corsica. I think. I, I think I think it's between Italy and yeah. Corsica, but there's a a couple islands there that uh, they all have big cliff faces, so they're completely fucking inaccessible, and like you can't like bring a ship up to it because it's cliffs. And then, you know, yeah. you got the ocean beating on it, so it's going to crash your ship. Yeah. Every time you go there, your ship gets crashed. But there's also, more recently, and by recently, I mean, like, the last couple hundred years, um, you know, we found out that there's a big seal population on those fucking islands that are always, you know, like, you know, screaming and singing and making their barking noises. Mm. But because the way it echoes around, it sounds like singing. So, real life, what would happen... There's a bunch of singing on these islands, and you sail your ship in there, you crash, everybody dies. Like, one guy gets shipwrecked and comes home. What happened? We heard singing on this island, and then it crashed. It must have been some weird mystical creature, maybe a siren, uh, and it was singing, and it was so beautiful, we went towards it. Um, not Totally not because we were trying to bang whatever was there, because it kind of sounds like women. <laughs> and I haven't seen a chick in a fucking year. Um, yeah, and then, and then we then we crashed. So, it... it it's it's neat to see like hey here's a real life example of I understand that like I hear singing it sh crashed the ship uh, let, let's let's make it it was totally shit we were totally going there for babes right yeah we were going we we're cruising for we we're cruising for tail that's 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 what we got there yeah no I mean it, it's the, the same the same sort of stuff um with with the selkies so the the, the selkie story like I said earlier was the the most famous one is a fisherman is walking along. And he sees a bunch of selkies dancing. For those who don't know, selkies, um, are, like very dissimilar to the sirens, are human. There's multiple theories. So some say they're fallen angels. Some people say they're seals with seals, like they're they're seals. They're people that like were bad in the past. Now they're cursed to be seals, or they're people to drown and sea. Anyways, they can come up on land. Normally, it's around a full moon, and they'll take their seal skins off. Fisherman sees very attractive women dancing, steals the seal skin, hides it away. He then forces her to marry him. In some cases, she falls in love, which is very clearly Stockholm syndrome. Um, and in some, and in some cases, she just stays with him until she can escape. Sometimes she finds the seal skin. Sometimes her kids do, and then uh, she goes back to the sea. In some of the stories, she drowns the kids. In some of the stories, she, she takes the kids with her. In some of the stories, the kids live, like, with their dad, and they, like, go to the sea to meet their mum, like, every so often. My favourite one of those stories was it, uh, they just turned around, they were like, um, the, the dad, the, the, the specific version of the story, because there's, like, 50 different guys and 50 different versions, like, from, like, all the way from Orkney to Wales and Ireland, like, there's different versions to this story. And this particular guy, he, he had, um, he had uh he who was like oh, i'm really upset and the kids were like don't worry we'll stay with you and keep your mental health in check and i was like he kidnapped he kidnapped a seal woman <laughs> and imprisoned her for like 30 years his mental health is not the priority <laughs> but i the i was i was talking to, to aiden mattis and that about this recently and he said that like that story could very easily so one of the ideas is that it was the finnish coming over because there is a, a Scandinavian aspect, not just a Celtic one. So the Finns obviously would be a very exotic people to and, the and, and we're talking about the people Finn, not not the whim that a fish yeah, has. Yeah, the Finnish to to finish to the people, <laughs> the, to finish the to everyone who, who um is not down with the lingo, so to say, of the Europeans. Um, but uh, so the Finns have come over, and obviously, what would their uh that they would they would land. 
you still let both <laughs> woman can't go back because the Finns were trading with the, the Scandinavians and the, the Celts. Aiden Mattis reckons it's the Inuits, which is also works very well, especially if you're looking at Iceland and that. Um, because they did have seal skin boats. Um but then you're looking yeah. like yeah. So I think it's the Finns personally, that's where I settle with the where the silkies come from. But the main reason I settle for this is either way, is the, the one of the big stories with the Selkies would always be that the uh the, the so if you're a woman and you're in an unhappy marriage you go to the sea you cry three times and a selkie man will come and love you is the exact way it's described a selkie man will come and provide love to the woman um you're getting that silky smooth love yeah. huh and also there were stories of selkie men coming into town um looking for help or or like asking for hospitality which back then normally because they were a lot less scared of be having stuff stolen you would asking for hospitality was basically saying can i like sleep under your roof and i'll repay you in some kind normally that repayment when selkies were involved was banging your wife um but obviously again that fits even more because historically traders would come into town and nine months later there would be a a random child and if you have a Finnish or an Inuit trader very hunky very hunky exotic man <laughs> comes in and you know the, the 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 Scottish woman who's lived with like you know big Scottish geezer in her life goes oh I'll have a bit I'll have a bit of that so I think it's like it's not quite drag it's not it's not quite forcing your ship into cliffs to try and bang the singing yeah. but it's the same like yeah, no, no, and, and like that checks out though too because you know people like you know exotic stuff because like especially if you go back further back, you know like uh, you know the, the UK has got a pretty homogenous population, um, yes. so it's like all right, like, like like I mean more so than say you know France or Germany where people are you know constantly crossing it you know yeah well, the stopping France, France they, had like the moors and that coming in regularly didn't they? Yeah, um, but you know say say you know the UK. It's like, all right, we're all on this island. Nobody really leaves except for to, like, you know, go do East India Trading Company stuff, and a lot of those guys just stay gone. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I know that, like, you're my cousin on both sides of the family because that's how small everything is. But, uh, oh, look, this other person that I am not related to in any way, shape, or form. I'm at that. Yep. But I do, yep. I, I, I won... Um, I 100% like, especially, especially with the kidnapping of stuff, because I could see a very lonely fisherman. Like you say, especially if you're in a small fishing village in Orkney, and your choices for a potential date are your sister, your sister's cousin, and your sister's <laughs> cousin's cousin. Yeah. Like, so you're gonna oh, there's an Inuit woman. She's got a boat. So if I just take the boat, and then I give her refuge. And then she finds the boat thirty years later. She go. She's immediately going to go home, isn't she? Which I like. Yeah, uh, the paddle or canoe, as one might say. <laughs> no, and it's funny too because, like, um, you know, we, we've all got this stereotype about like you know sailors going out there and just being fucking frisky with everything, or you know, port towns being bad like this. And then like, it, it's always looked at you know kind of negatively, um, or at the very least, you know, humorously. Um, but the dangers of that have always been there in um, our, our minds. Like, if you go back to the Odyssey, right? Um, Odysseus is, you know, sailors, they show up on uh, Circe's island, and then, you know, it's it's effectively in the book, Whore Island number one, before they go to Whore Island number two with Calypso. But they, they, they go to this, like, all-you-can-fuck buffet, and then the in the story, Circe's a witch that turns them into pigs. But the allegory there is, hey, if you go into port and just, like, orgy yourself to death, you do that because you're a fucking pig. So maybe, maybe, maybe don't, maybe don't bring home syphilis yeah. or whatever the ancient Greek version of syphilis was. I'm sure they had crabs at least. Herpes, herpes has always been around. Certain, don't I'm fairly, herpes. Certain, I'm fairly certain the, that syphilis was around for the ancient Greeks. I'm fairly certain it was. Um, I, I think syphilis was like a new world thing. I think. I think that started showing up. In it, there was something like I know we had like smallpox. Because it was known, because uh, you had lovers' pox, didn't you? You had lovers' pox. I'm fairly certain lovers' pox was probably around that. Like, like I know that was definitely a, very much a Tudor disease, but that was probably around for a while. I love. Well, the other thing, is, like, say, uh, herpes um, wasn't negatively looked at until 
someone came up with a cream to make it go away. Yeah. And it was like, like, because back in the day, just like everybody f- had fucking herpes, and it was like, all right, well, cool, got it, neat. And then somebody's like, I can make this shit disappear. No one cares. All right, let's demonize the shit out of herpes so that, you know, people will buy it. Like, so not not being okay with herpes is actually a conspiracy built by big pharma to make you not want herpes to buy their shit. Also, I know this sounds, I do not have herpes. <laughs> not that it matters, because I'm married, and I'm not planning on banging any of y'all, but, you know. <laughs> I thought he was going to say I don't have suicidal thoughts before Big Pharma bashes in the door. <laughs> like, we, neither of us have the ability to hang ourselves and shoot ourselves in a shotgun that's four metres over that way. That is not yeah. humanly possible. Also, you should look that up because that actually happened. Hillary Clinton uh, also, wasn't involved. Uh, 9mm and uh, 38 special. So, um, if I, I shoot myself in the back of the head with a round that's not that and then magically get rid of the gun... It wasn't me, all right? <laughs> uh, it's fine. It's Which fine. That, happened, that happened, by the way. The uh, guy that uh, broke the story about how um, uh, fucking uh, crack cocaine was being brought into the United States or manufactured by the CIA to, like, you know, destroy black neighborhoods, that dude shot himself in the back of the head twice and got rid of the gun. He disposed of the... How, how curious of him? He disposed of the weapons that they wouldn't have... He, he, he was just that good. He was that good. He was, like, that, like... Did he have? Did he have a pet dog as well? I know. I know. I know. Your government likes to deal with pet dogs specifically. I don't think you're going to kill dogs yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that was that was later on. That was later. <laughs> we could do an entire video of like, hey, what have the British and the American governments done shittily in history? Oh uh, well, you know what's funny though is every time the Americans and the Brits get together and do something, like it's like always showed up by someone else like say say germany we're gonna take we use germany for an example right it's like all right well they're still doing the war and we have to stop them from doing the war and the best way to stop them from doing the war isn't actually killing their soldiers it's to kill their manufacturing so america we're going to bomb the factories so they can't build shit and then it turns out the germans can just build shit in their house so the Brits are like all right well we're just gonna bomb their apartment complexes so that you know they don't have a place to, you know, live or do their shit. You've got to drop your game and... down a little bit again. <laughs> um, <laughs> New mic. Yeah. So, all right. Anyway, so the yeah. British are like, we're on the friggin' uh, apartment complexes so that, you know, they don't have a place to live so they can't build shit. So the Germans put them all in refugee camps. Then the Canadians show up and they're like, we're just going to bomb the refugee camps. Fuck y'all guys. You fucking America, fucking England, you fucking pussies. No, no, we're going straight for the fucking war crimes. I love that Canada is like, like growing up, I was always, like, the joke was, like, oh, Canada, Canadians are so sweet. And then as everyone started reading into Canadian history, we were like, what? The only nation, I like, the only two nations, I think, globally who have done more, well, three, globally have done more messed up stuff than Canada is probably the Germans, the Croatians, and the Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> like, Canada is up, some of the war crimes the Canadians were busy doing. Uh, like even on their own people at points here, there's some um some very nasty indigenous history with the Canadians, um yeah. But uh, yeah, speaking of indigenous people, so the Inuits and the Selkies, that's the worst way to bring it back. Um, but we're going with it. Um, it won't work. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, the the they weren't doing war crimes, but there was stories um down south and sort of like more Cornwall way, um that it was actually the Spanish that were turning up. And so, like, these attractive, hunky Spaniards were turning up, and they were instead... I'm not, I'm not buying that story. I'm not buying that story for one fucking second. I'll tell you why. Okay, go on. Um, um, so, do you know who Apostle Leon was? Uh, no, I'm not familiar with that. For those of you, well, I guess you, and then for those of you at home, Apostle Leon was uh, a Spanish explorer, came over here, uh, made a bunch of maps of what's, you know, now Florida, Georgia, a lot of the Caribbean, you know, yeah. and he was on this quest to find the Holy Grail. Um, not the Holy Grail, the Fountain of Youth. And there's a tourist attraction in St. Augustine, Florida. You know, that's, you know, hey, it's the Fountain of Youth. It's just a well, but it's the Fountain yeah. of Youth. We have a life-size statue of Ponce de Leon. And one of the things about the Spaniards is, um, back in the Spanish Empire, the captain of the flotilla also had to be the tallest person there, you know, because that's how it worked. Now, Ponce de Leon was 4'10". Yeah, so if you say hunky Spanish dude, it's like, nah, dude, have you, have you met Spaniards? They're this tall. I'm not buying that there's a hunk. There, yeah, there's five hunky Spanish dudes, and they're all fucking descendants of Moors, all right? But you also, yeah, 
but you also have to remember like if you if you were in cornwall like cornwall at that point is like the corner of the corner of europe <laughs> like so the span the four foot ten spanish dude is probably still gonna be quite hunky uh, or at least <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll break into um we'll break into uh um uh some comments quick and then we'll we'll go over one of the other one of the other bits we've got written down um if you can read through your notes after <laughs> all right <laughs> um uh right okay so the king says let's get it i'm assuming that was to start yeah uh, men have low such low standards nowadays um if you've watched the podcast so far you've learned that we always had low standards um we've quite literally been trying to shake fish women um, uh, south africa has a story about mermaids that live in a waterfall that's actually a very common mermaid myth of like women not just mermaids but like fey in general of just like in the water. well i mean yeah. think about it though like before like we invented showers that was the only way to get a shower instead of yeah. a bath and and as we all know showers are superior to baths yeah so it would make sense that they would want to take a shower, not a bath. Yeah, like it, but it would, but it would also like make sense of like, especially if you're just and it like if you're in the woods and you're exploring and then you see like a moderately attractive woman in the in a waterfall. Everyone knows that that it like showering in a waterfall like that in the wilderness. So there's no one else around you. You if you if you're a four, you're an eight. Like at that point, especially in the waterfall. So to them, they're like, yeah. wow, well, there's fair. Yeah, there's there's fairies in the waterfall. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, no, honey. I was totally seduced by this forest spirit. It wasn't another chick I was banging. So that, that actually, that actually, that, that's something I completely forgot about the silkies. It was actually a common way of getting divorced at that point. So in the Celtic like regions of the British Isles, would be like these kids aren't mine. You clearly banged a selkie. I want a divorce. And like the dads could just leave because it was like the the mum had like bedded a selkie. Um, the same way. That it was used regularly for the the husbands would be like, oh um no I didn't that that hot redhead in the pub no um yeah she got because she was a selkie like um yeah so it wasn't my fault I couldn't control myself because she used her selkie magic and like that got like and that happens a lot as obviously well. yeah. not this guy's fault yeah like it's obviously but it always happens like mermaids selkies um. There's a couple of different stories in the Amazon as well. Like the reoccurring stories, the guy's like, "She was a mermaid of some description." Not my fault. I tried. I didn't. There's one version where it was swan women, and I'm like, "How creative!" Like I, I like the. I, part of me likes the idea that throughout history, all of these myths just come from guys being unfaithful, and they're like, "How can I convince my wife?" <laughs> well, see this. Oh, that one makes me think of Zeus, where you know. Zeus disguised himself as a swan and totally didn't just assault this woman. Yeah, that's... Um, yeah. Um, and then she was like, oh, yeah, no, a swan came and banged me, and that's why we have this kid, honey. There's also right. a story where Zeus disguised, disguised himself as, I think it's like some kind of cabinet. And that's how he seduced. And I'm like, the, like I, 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 the stories of Zeus is like, because when I'm growing up, it was like, oh, Zeus got around. And then, like, again, when you grow up and you read the adult stories, it's like, Zeus got around not always consensually. And yeah, like, it. That, that's the other fucking thing about this, though, that kind of makes me go, hmm, um, there might be something deeper here. Um, which is, oh, no, I wasn't cheating on you, husband. I had sex with a bull, and that's why I'm having this minotaur baby. And the husband's like, oh, you're just banging bulls? Okay, cool, as long as another, not another dude. Which makes me kind of go, so it's okay to fuck the livestock, <laughs> but not another dude. Um, are we sure that Greece isn't Europe's Alabama? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to comment because that's the Balkans, and I'm much closer to the Balkans than you, and I'm much more likely to be on by the Balkans. I mean, but the, the story of the bull, though, on, on, on um, like the, like the story of the Minotaur. Right, on Crete. My brain was searching for the name of the island for too long then. But the 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 fact that she had it built, like she had a machine built for her to get into because she lusted after the ball. So yes, according to the story, she was like like you know zapped by different. Uh, I can't remember which god specifically. I think it might have been Zeus. Like zapped by a god to make her lust for the ball. <sighs> But she built yeah. it. She had it. Also, think, think about this, though. This is the ancient world. People don't know 
exactly what you know machines are like because a lot of them are fucking farmers. So how did they get the idea that you know this woman built a machine to bang bulls if there wasn't someone out there building machines to bang bulls? Someone must have done it for that image to go into a writer's head. <laughs> but um, but yeah, anyway, that's how they used to divorce in the Orkney Islands. Um, um, Kerry John, uh, oh yeah, Kerry John Phillips says, "Get that flag off your shirt, colonizer." My, I have Irish ancestors, so they're probably watching me from from heaven whilst also fighting my English ancestors. I like I like the idea. I'm just like I get up there and then just like there's the Irish side, the English side, and it's just, it's just like Valhalla, but it's just my family tree. <laughs> it's just like... Um, uh, Kerry John Phillips has sage advice that was to, uh, to your advice in what to do if you're ever in uh, I think it was Hong Kong uh, <laughs> um, uh, so again, um, ask them basic questions about ancient Rome anything beyond the quizzical look run fair enough uh, imagine being in a loveless pirate marriage no way he's getting my doubloons <laughs> he, he, took, he took half of my doubloons he's my doubloons he really messed up my poop back <laughs> ima ima imagine being in a pirate marriage right on the ship that mary reed was on when it was finally revealed that she was in fact a woman and you're just sitting there looking at your husband your, your pirate husband going i'm so screwed this isn't gonna be at the same time you're thinking i also kind of want to get married now because there's a woman on the ship no, no, no! And then when that's revealed to the crew, he's like, "Oh, thank God, you're actually a woman! I totally thought you were a dude the whole... Wait, no, I knew you were a woman the whole time. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, I didn't. Didn't think you were a dude. No, not at all. Yeah, you just sit there like, just like <laughs> you do reverse scenarios. Like, oh, I don't really fancy you now. I know you're a woman. Like, <laughs> no, no, it's kind of boring. But imagine also because Mary Reed is highlighted as like being insanely beautiful. So what it, the the reports of that come from? other pirates on the ship so if she's the only yeah. woman on the ship like and she's not exactly gonna like tell them oh no don't write well, that down she was prettier than fucking bob was yeah <laughs> imagine Bob. Like, oh, i wasn't there i'm just i'm making an assumption if, if, that, <laughs> if that was me though 100 percent, i'll be seeing her like oh no no don't don't write down that i'm the most beautiful woman in the pirate fleet don't write that down um uh, and last one, we've got, uh, we've got a comment from Ian saying, "Oh, trips in this episode. Nice trip is in this episode because this is our show. This is our. We don't know how regularly we're going to do this. It's just when one of us has an idea. I feel like, <laughs> which we've already no, we'll, discussed we'll, we'll, our next we'll idea. Exactly yeah. Um, and then on TikTok, we've got a couple of comments. Uh, fun fact: the nation of Vanatu was a shared colony of the UK and France until its independence. Or was it called New Herbies? If I'm right, I probably really badly pronounced that because I went from Herbies fully loaded. Uh, <laughs> and then Peter Petrov says hi. Hi, Peter. Hello, Petrov. Um, but yeah. So what else? We're at 52 minutes. So we'll probably go about another 40. You're right on that. So, whatever, dude. I'm, I'm getting. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. To kick this back off, um, I, I'm gonna talk about the Little Mermaid and why you're a pervert. Okay. Okay. So you, you grow up, right? You're a little kid, and you're watching the Little Mermaid, and you're like, "Hey, that that redheaded fish lady, that 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 really uh, does it for me." I don't know what it does because I'm eight, but yeah. it does it for me. And then you grow up, and then you're like, you're like, "All right, well, hey, dude, the internet exists. I wonder what if what this." Uh, Aerial Rule 34 stuff is, and you still think she's hot. And then at some point you realize, wait a minute, I, I thought she was hot when I was 8, and she was like 12, but now I'm 30, and she's still 12. I need to go to jail. Uh, especially <laughs> if you're looking at how old she is in the traditional fairy tale, not just the... Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. straight to jail. Do not pass go, do not collect $200, and no, you do not get paid in seashell bras. <laughs> No, I, I you know, the, there is, but is on, on top of that, it's just the sheer amount of War 34 yeah. for Ariel that is disturbing. But again, it's it's the same, it's that same sort of, I think, I think it highlights a great deal that even if you're not a sailor, you can still have that sort of pull, because it, there's a mystery to it. It's, it's the men, it's the same reason a lot of women play hard to get. Men like unobtainable things. It's quite literally why empires were built, or as Jordan Peterson says, Men did a lot more when it was harder to see boobs. Um... Yeah, dude, and the other thing, though, too, is let's talk about Ursula for a minute. Um, and I have a point to get to with Ursula, you know, the, the sea witch in that, um, you know, she was half squid instead yeah, of half... Yeah. 
research, which obviously you'd think, okay, well, first off, I'd rather go for the squid because, you know, I kind of like legs wrapped around me, right? You know, that and, like, if you're doing it with a fish, you know, you gotta, like, find the hole, and it's like, no, it's pretty obvious where it is on the squid, until you remember that squids have beaks. Squids, don't squids only have, like, one hole as well, it's, which is their mouth and butt. And it's a beak. So, yeah, sure, you're you're uh, doing triple penetration at one time with, you know, one hole and one schlong because that's how their biology works. But there's also a beak. So... I love that you yeah, clearly you know, thought like, this through. Like, what? I love that you've clearly thought about this a lot. The way you've gone into it. Do you have, like, a special type of friggin', like, dong ring that, like, protects, like, the bottom of your shaft while, you know, she's, like, spasming and, like, you know, the beak's doing this, so, like, your base is okay while the insides are doing the swirly bit? Like, how does how does that work? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, 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 I've never thought about this until now. I thought a lot about how... I, how I thought a lot about, you know, how me and Ariel could crack on as, as I've grown up. Yeah, because you're a pedophile. We, we've established this. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's she's right. Or maybe she's sixteen. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go. Hang on. Let me. Let me. Let me. Uh, let me quickly Google this and see if I'm going to jail. All right. Technically, I mean, to be fair, I have. Yes. By the way, it's just for how long? How old is Ariel in The Little Mermaid? Are we going for the movie or the original book? I think we should. Be uh, the original book. She was like what nine or something. In the movie, she's sixteen. Okay, I'm going to jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's right to jail. You're not past care, you're not collecting hundred dollars. Now, granted, if this was the nineteen seventies and you were a rock star, that would have been okay. But that's the only other fucking uh, yeah. <laughs> scenario where that's acceptable to do. Yeah. And it's not even really acceptable. It's just like, uh yeah, no, rock stars did that back in the day. Sorry, that's how it went. And what what's worse is I only recently learned that Elvis Presley was a pedophile. Bro was bro was bro was married to a fifteen, sixteen year old. Actually, I think they met when she was like thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, which is weird because he was like late twenties when that happened. Which, like, it, it's different if, like, you know, I don't know, she's sixteen and you're eighteen because, like, you're mm, both so wobbly still. Like, wait, I mean, it's, still it's still weird, yeah, no, it's a lot weirder when you like put an entire decade between them. Yeah. You know, when he was like, I think he was like twenty four, twenty five when he met. <laughs> he was like closing along thirty, and she wasn't even like over the gap to twenty. Yeah. Uh, but um, but speaking of of pedophiles and um, and sexual offenders, Poseidon, um, who actually fun, um, Disney took the name Triton for the Little Mermaid, like for Ariel's dad. That's why he's very like Poseidon coded. He like he very yeah. much like has that. Like they're basing off of Poseidon because Triton was in real Greek mythology, um, Poseidon's son. Um, yeah. Now, a lot of um, a lot a lot a lot of people. Um, also, hello Charles. I see you in the YouTube comments. Um, is that King Charles? I think King Charles has joined the chat. Guy. Oh, Please do hello. Uh, uh, real quick on King Charles, real quick. I'm not going to get political on this or anything, oh, but like that show, oh, The no. Crown. Have you seen that show, The Crown? Uh, I have you, not. You know I have not. I, I know a decent amount about the royal family. I haven't seen The Crown. Okay, well, um, in, in the show, The Crown, they got an actor to play um, Charles, who is an incredibly handsome man and it's like bro like you're really making like a guy that looks good play this guy have you seen this guy in real life um I i'm not saying that like this is the prime example of why you shouldn't be fucking your sister but get someone uglier to play that motherfucker <laughs> sorry <laughs> go on be funny if you just like just the next comment in was like you're both getting beheaded now you're like i'm american i can't do that <laughs> um uh, but uh, that no, just completely throw me off. <laughs> uh, but no, um, get, uh, but, uh, to be fair, King Charles was actually bullied over his ears when he was a child, actually. Which is, imagine being a future king and still getting bullied. I would, I would be so angry. What wasn't there an old fairy tale about like the king has horses' ears and he would wear this crown that hit his ears and every time he got a haircut, fucking, uh, he'd have to kill the barber because that... the barber would see his ears and just like laugh at him, that and then so eventually he got over it because. Uh, that sounds very German. That sounds like a just fairy tale Germans would come up with. Yeah. But um, the the sort of story of Poseidon. Now, the reason I bring it up is because it's like it's very is still sea, sea based, and if anyone knows me, um, I've admitted a couple of times to my mythological crush, being Medusa, right? 
now, I'm, like, I've been into this a couple of times, and everyone's like, the, the woman with snakes... Do you think that her pubes are snakes? Huh? Do you think that her pubes are snakes? I was about to bring this up. <laughs> it's just gonna, it's gonna bring... Which is getting dark, considering what we're about to talk about with Medusa. But I've had this debate with actual friends in uni. We were sitting there, and we've, like, had sober discussions about... Would her I'm sober. pubes be snakes? <laughs> Would her... You know, no, I mean, like... No, like... Like, we've sat down purposely, not like, because we're sitting down purposely for a show. I mean, like, unprompted, we've sat down, like, at breakfast, and one of us has said, do you think Medusa's pubes would be snakes? And we've, like, and it's been an ongoing debate for, like, last six years. Better question. Um, Say, like, you do bed Medusa, and then you, like, get into a long-term relationship with her, and you kind of get to the point where it's, like, where it happens with couples every now and again, where it's, like, dude, I don't really feel like doing anything, but, but I'm feeling a little frisky tonight she's like oh god just use one of the snakes so you grab one of her hair snakes and use it like a flashlight what the fuck <laughs> yeah i don't know how you took the story considering where this story's gonna go in a second it's gonna, gonna really regret that like, you edit that bit out and I know what it's gonna go. i'm just i'm just i'm pushing an alternate timeline where like you know instead of you know you turning to stone you show up and you're rock hard and then uh you know things from there. yeah i mean yeah that's how you it's a juice producer, but anyways, obviously, so um, going far, far back into I oh, not Mycenae, and they were the people who did Greece. And no, no, it was Mycenae and Greece, yes. I'm thinking, I've forgotten the name of the people that were in on Crete, Minoans, that was one because Minotaur, Minoans, you know, yeah, yeah. So you had the Minoans, and the, the, the Mycenaeans were the people who were in Greece first, so they believed that the Medusa stuff originates from the Mycenaeans and um, from Mycenae yeah. Greece specifically. Now, in this, it, <laughs> Wooly comments, I just scroll on and hear, use it as a flashlight. Well, you, if you want to go on YouTube, don't worry, um, you can look at the entire live on YouTube if you've missed most of it. <laughs> because I there's actually, a actually, actually, well, um, say, say you are getting a mouth hug from Medusa, can she peg you with the snakes while she does that? I'm assuming so. It depends how long she's, like, she can't cut the hair because they're snakes. Yeah, I mean, and snakes kind of look like a dong anyway, so, like, she could be doing the this, and a snake could be going up and tickling your yeah. butthole. Yeah. We're ask asking the, the real questions on this. <laughs> 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 but, um, so, obviously, her story I begins... I get a periodic article after this. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a Pink News article about this show in a couple of days. But so she she starts off nicely in Greece. Originally, like her and the because there's three gorgons. So Medusa has two sisters. Now, originally they all start off as gorgons, like they were all like snake hair, and some of them like and Medusa's like the most human looking of them. Yeah. She also never has a snake lower half. Um, that's a holy modern Hollywood invention or like a more Roman invention. Um, I believe she has like goat's feet. No, bird's feet. She has bird's feet in the original myth. So there's time to... Is that what British people call chicks birds? I don't know where that originates from, actually. Although, I, I, now that I'm thinking about that, that there was real irony in that statement, because I call the women chicks, which is another term for birds. Yeah. Do you think that's why we call chicks bird women? Chicks probably, bird like... Women? Yeah, chicks probably comes from, the, like, us saying birds a lot. But I don't know yeah. where that would originate from. A lot of English slang actually comes from... This is going to upset all of the English and the Scottish people watching. Um, a lot of English and Scottish slang actually comes from the cross-pollination of languages. Because, um, fun fact, the Scottish was actually made up of both Celtic and Angles, who, like, fled north. Specifically, the Anglo-Saxons who fled away from the Normans. And then, like, the, the Scottish king at the time was like, have a load of castles here and just don't let the Normans come in. And then, like, uh, um, marry into a lot of Scottish... Like, a, a lot of... Um, Pictish and Celtic clans, and then over time you have the Scottish appear because the Scottish are ever so. And, and, and it's funny on the language part too because like no one calls that fucking Gaelic. If you're over here, that language is Irish, and if you're over here, that language is Scottish. What the fuck is this Gaelic shit? Get it out of here. Well, the the, the, the Scottish is because obviously you had the Picts and the Picts were beaten out. See the history of like the British Isles. Everyone gets mad at me because I always call it the the floating Balkans. Because people think like we give the impression of this like island. The English come in, they dominated everyone. But the reality is, very regularly for most of the history until the English domination of the British Isles, everyone was just brutally killing everyone. Like the Irish originally came over, invaded Scotland, and then later on the Scottish would come over, invade Ireland. 
because the Scottish were like the descendants of the original Irish that in invaded with a little bit more English and obviously some Pictish mixed in. That's where you get the Ulster Scots from. That's why. Yeah. But yeah, like the the entire history. But anyway, back to Pos the, the the how we get to Poseidon. So, anyways, fast forward to the Greeks. Medusa is now like a maternal, like she's a caregiving, like maternity figure. Um, and then you fast forward again. And she's suddenly a priestess of Athena. Now, this version of the story is like kind of Greek and kind of Roman as, as, as it goes on. Um, and where she has an affair with Poseidon, if you know this, the history of Poseidon and Athena. They fought each other for Athens, and which would become Athens. And Athena would become the patron god of Athens, which is why it's called Athens. Um, and then he would lose, and so they were kind of salty. And then, um, so Medusa loses like her Gorgon status and becomes a priestess of Athena, who cheats, uh, who has an affair. Well, it's not really an affair because she's single. Although I believe Poseidon is actually married. But anyways, so he has an affair, and then she's cursed by Athena, and then obviously that's why. In any Greek story where a female is involved, um, doesn't doesn't a fair yeah, imply yeah, consent? Yeah, yeah, we, we're getting to that. We're getting because the Rome when Ovid gets it, we're getting to that because the story has one last change. Um, and that's why Athena is regularly. If you if any story, if there's a he, Greek hero and they go to Athena for help, she's like, "I'll help you, but I need you to really fuck up this woman called Medusa for me. I just want just cause her pain." Because everyone knows, goes. Medusa's always being attacked by men because Athena's telling them to do it for her favor. <laughs> like Athena just had it out for Medusa, even when like there's no, even when. It, it, is that what kids nowadays call internalized misogyny? Yes, I would say. Okay. <laughs> I would actually say that's probably, I, I unlike all of the kids on TikTok, that's actually probably a good use of the term. It actually worked, but um, so um. Oh, where are we going? So, anyways, Ovid, um, from Ovid's Metamorphoses, I believe he calls it, takes the original Greek stories, and instead of any of her being just a gorgon the entire time, or having being a priestess of Athena and having the affair, Ovid takes it and goes, "Yeah, Poseidon turned up like complete." Um, oh, it's on. We're streaming this to tick. Uh, I'll, I'll get away with one time. Um, uh, trigger warning for the R word coming up. Uh, for anyone watching, but um. Uh, Poseidon turns up and goes, oh, you're a priest of Athena. Cool, you're attractive. I'm going to rape you now. And then Athena sees this happen and goes, I'm going to punish Medusa. <laughs> and then... Which is even more fun because Athena is the goddess of war. So it's like... What... You could have, she could like, have. Is that just land based warfare? Or can you not go into the ocean and like do like uh, submariner yeah. friggin' like marine tactics and get back at Poseidon? Yeah. Who did this? No, no, it's the woman's fault. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Neat. She quite literally, the favoured daughter of Zeus, the favoured daughters of Zeus couldn't turn around and be like, I'm just going to do our utmost war on Poseidon. She blames Medusa and then sends scores of men after her to, like, make her life miserable. She sends, like, um, yeah. uh, is it Pericles? I think it's Pericles. Um... The guy begins with P, can't remember. But then and she sends like Jason after her. Like multiple guys continue the amount of stories when Medusa gets her head cut off because <laughs> Perseus. Yeah, that was it, yeah. Um, where Medusa gets her head cut off because they needed to use her head to turn another army to stone. Like yeah. Athena, Athena just is where I, it's where I really dislike Athena in like in Greek mythology, because she really is one of the worst gods. Well, I mean, th there's two things on that. First off, like, there's always, um, like, you know, all, all the iconography of uh, Athena. She's got her helmet. She's got her spear. She's ready for war. But, like, besides, like, one book in the Iliad, she never does the combat. And it's like, so so you're just cosplaying. Neat. Mm. Secondly, fun fact about Medusa is there isn't any myth where she ever turns a woman into stone. Yeah, but that's because there was no women warriors sent after her. Athena was just busy like, oh, you're a god. Yeah, you, you want my help? Go yeah, kill Medusa. You know, like, we're going to turn this crowd into fucking, um, we're going to turn this whole crowd into stone. It's never mentioned that a woman has ever turned to stone. Oh, really? So even in the crowds, the, the women escape? That's an interesting story. I mean, there might have been, but like no one took the time to write down that, you know, yeah. Jessica got turned into a rock, just Bob and Jeff. That, I mean, that, that works on, on multiple levels. The entire story of Poseidon and Medusa and Athena highlights how much um, Greek society hated women and Roman society yeah. even more so. Like in, in Roman and Greek society, it wasn't bad to be gay. It was bad to be on the bottom because it was considered the woman's position. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, it just shows. But I love it whenever someone goes. Oh, what if you're doing it standing up in the shower with another dude? Like, which one yells? The, which one is the woman then? I think like, if you're both standing up. Whichever one receives, they counted as the woman. What, what if like you you do the hook and you like at the same time with each other? I don't know. I I don't I don't know if the Greeks. Actually I said no because they brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> There is probably, oh, there's almost certainly some, imagine being a historian finding that. It's like, here's the protocol for if they're doing the hook. Like, he's reading it like, why did the Greeks write this down? We're not actually going, random tangent for the Greeks. The amount of times the Greeks would write stuff down, and it would be, Philophenus the, the fourth did this action with, with Philippa the eighth. And they all, they um and this was very important, and it really affected. And then historians will, will be watching and be like, Brilliant. We understand what it's affecting, um, but who is who is Philippus the fourth, and who is Philip the eighth? Who are these people? Because it's written down as if you should understand it, because it's written yeah. down at the time when everyone understood it, <laughs> and the Greeks do that over and over. so do the Romans just over and over again. So yeah, you should know who Caesar is. Yeah, like Julius Caesar. No, no, no. Jeff Caesar. Yes, he lived in the seventh century A.D. Okay, who the fuck is he? And there's no, it's not like we could just go back in time, but like we really need to ask you who is this person that you refer to. It's the same as um, and, and, and there's no actual records of him. There's just a coin with his face on it. It says Jeff Caesar. So they made a coin, so he had to be important. But I don't see him in the record anywhere else besides this one coin. So um... do you want to know a really famous case of how this gets really out of hand as well? So the first, what the first reference. Um, to my knowledge, um, of King Arthur is a guy called Gurdarfa, and it says that he fought like King Arthur. Fought like Arthur. That's the first... And from there, you have the entire King Arthur. So we know there was a guy who was very clearly a good warrior, who was very clearly fighting off the Germanic invaders of the, the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jutes. Yeah. So that's the, the 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 actual starting point <laughs> that we the entire just explodes is that one reference and they all knew who it was and obviously the, the, the King Arthur story is like that's the story of King Arthur um in the literary world's fucking great anyway because he starts off as Welsh and then he doesn't really get really big until like someone in France starts writing fan fiction about it yep. and then it bounces back and forth between you know the UK and France a little bit and then Somewhere along the line, the English were like, yeah, no, King Arthur, he's got to be like the hero of England. He's not Welsh. Okay? Yeah. Not I mean, Welsh. And, and the French had nothing to do with this. The, the Welsh, okay? The Welsh and the Irish stories were so heavily... Like, because the, the thing with Arthurian legend is, even when I speak to Welsh people about it, and I'm like, you can't really class it as Welsh myth because it's so big on its own. Like, Welsh yeah. myth, like, Arthurian myth relies that you understand the basic folklore and mythology of Ireland, England, France, Wales, and Scotland. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and granted, you know, there's an easy way to, like, say if you wanted to, like, you know, prove that Arthur wasn't Welsh, and that's, uh, he's got two vowels in his name. Yeah, but that's the anglicization, though. <laughs> that is the answer to... to... Yeah, that's the joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh... <laughs> We're very good at, like, that if the we, we we actually have a museum of like how good we are at taking stuff and saying it's out. Um oh I'm gonna get in trouble for saying that. Um but yeah no I like the I, I well I mean my middle name is like so it's Ryan Arthur, which literally in if you translate it into Irish means little King Arthur. Oh that's fun. Yeah, which is why like for definitely where my ego comes from for a long time. But like that's I, yeah, but yeah, the the ending off on the art after stuff. The 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 best thing for it was the English kings for ages wanted the the main reason. So bearing in mind this is Welsh myth, English kings hear it, and the main reason they wanted to control the entire British Isles throughout all of history is because it's been an absolute like the English kings wanted to be King Arthur. They wanted to be reincarnation of King Arthur because obviously as the myth expanded from a, uh, a Britonic Celt who fought off, like or, or a Roman, a Romanized Celt, um, as he probably yeah. would have been, who fought off the Angles and the Jutes and the and the, the the Saxons as they were coming in and invading. He then becomes the king of the entirety of British Isles, which then 
forces the English monarchy to go, we want to take the entirety of the British Isles. And then we get, and then the English monarchy collapses, becomes a Scottish monarchy, which collapses and becomes a German monarchy, um, which we are actually under now as a German monarchy. Um, yeah, and then this ties also into the you know bigger theme of the episode because at the end of it he gets mortally wounded and then gets sailed off with some seed maidens to the island of Avalon because the King Arthur stuff and he gets the sword the the second sword depending on which version yeah. from the Lady of the Lake. Yeah, so which that, that's a, two to see. Metric. Um, yeah, no, and, and that's that's a fun fucking little metric um or tidbit of uh, history that often gets misunderstood, and I stole that idea for my 10th book which just came out um where i had a character that kind of did the lady of the lake thing where they think what happened that inspired that would there would have been you know some group of people i don't want to say cult because that's got the wrong uh connotations but like like what they would do is they would have some like yeah they would have some like you know wake deity and or like water deity and they would sacrifice their weapons to her by throwing their weapons out into the lake and then be like, hey, give us good favor in war. Here's a sword. Thanks. And then some entrepreneuring lady on the other side of the lake was like, these idiots are just throwing swords into the thing. I can sell this shit. So she goes diving, grabs some swords. And, you know, I don't know if you ever swam holding anything, but it's easier to hold it above you than it is to try to swim with it. So you see this woman coming out of the lake or you see a sword coming out of a lake. And then there's this woman holding it. You're like, oh, my God, where did you come from? I am. Uh, I'm a. T- uh, I'm a sea nymph. Do you have any gold? I'll give you a sword. Yeah, literally, it's a magical sword. I just like I just pulled. I just summoned it out of the lake. Uh, yeah, no, and I came out of the lake too. So thanks for the gold. I'm gonna go disappear back into the lake. I'm gonna grab a read, read out of it. Wait yeah. till night. Okay, now right, oh, that asshole's gone. This is easy, and then just like it, like every guy for like five miles is like, oh, yeah, I got this magical sword from a, I. You, you got a magical sword from, but okay, it was a different lake, so obviously it's a different, the same same lake. Ah, uh, well, I've got to kill you now because now you know this isn't a magical sword, and I know, so one of us has got to die, and that would always like you know keeps the myth going because it imagine yeah. you can't exactly be, especially at that point in time, can't pretend that you can't admit to being duped by a woman. <laughs> You'd be like, you do. Just, You've been cursed by a witch. Which again goes around. Did she win more than a duck? Or was it a goose? You didn't get that <laughs> reference. Okay. All right. Hold Wait, on. no, I, I thought you were going for duck, duck, goose. Oh, no, no. I was uh, referencing Monty Python. Does she weigh more than a duck? Yes, she's a witch! I've not seen that Monty Python. I've you haven't seen, seen the Blue Grail? I've, okay. I have it on DVD. I haven't actually seen it. I know this is a curse. I know this is blasphemy. I know this is blasphemy. I know. I know this is blasphemy. Huh. Okay. All right. All right. I will. I will. Go, I will go, we'll do a film, and I will actually watch Curse. I actually have it. Wait. It's one of that. Look, Curse of Monty Grail, and I have seen Life of Brian. I have actually seen Life of Brian. I haven't seen Curse. I'm I, the comments are coming in. I'm already getting. I'm gonna get through. Um, wait. You can't expel. Uh, you can't expect to wield supreme. Uh, supreme power. Uh, hang on. You can't expect to wield supreme power just because some watery tart threw a sword. At you. I do know that reference. I do know that reference. <laughs> That's when they go and visit the the um the little monastery bit, isn't it? And they're all equal pedals. No, no, no. They're 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 communists. Because I, I've always sat, I've always, when it, I have seen that scene a lot, and I'm like, in this scene, the people who are like going against the king seem seem like petulant children. But they live in a commune. Yeah, they're 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 they're, they're not English people. They don't have a monarchy. They're communists. They live in a commune. <laughs> Just goes to show that um, Marx didn't invent communism. Um, he didn't. He did do a lot for anti-Semitism and racism, though, uh, <laughs> which you can't get mad at me. That's a historical fact. Um, yeah, go read his letters to fucking Engels. Have fun with that shit, buddy. Yeah. Also, fucking, if you have a fun rabbit dive, fucking go read Marx's letters to fucking Lincoln. <laughs> what it, you? If you want a real rabbit dive, go in about him and Engels, how they were both clearly gay but also really homophobic. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Um. So he says, "I'm getting my pitchfork." Brilliant. Um, so to finish off, actually, have you got any? You wanted to do um, Calypso's whorehouse. Uh, the what? The the Calypso's the four floor whorehouse. 
Oh no, the four floors of horrors. It's a uh, it's actually an apartment complex in Singapore, but the first four floors of it are, is like a big strip mall. But all instead of like different shops and restaurants, it's all you know fucking brothels. Wait, so how does this relate uh, to the, the the whore island you was talking about? We probably oh no, no, that, that was a different like... thing. So so that that, that was I, I didn't bring it up by name, but that was meant. That's what I was talking about. When I was talking about Filipino hookers. Oh uh, okay. Oh okay, I got it now. Okay, yeah. Now the only other thing on my list is uh, "Son of a Gun," which is you know a euphemism for "son of a bitch." But you know, yeah. back in the day yeah. when people be sailing around and you know, say they're going on a, like a long trip and they bring their wives with them or whatever, or there was just a chick on ship for whatever reason, gives birth on the gun deck. It's like, oh, yeah, son of a gun. So that, that, that's that, that's actually a naval term. So I figured you know, I'd bring that, that up because a lot of people are like, because like it seems like a lot of people now are like they say "son of a gun" because they don't want to say "bitch." It's like no, and actually, "son of a gun" was was there before son of a bitch was yeah so it was also reminded me of um one of my one of my favorite heroes from history grace o'malley or granny mule as the irish caller um so a lot of people don't know a lot you often hear as well um the irish will be thanking the turkish oh. because they helped them in during the potato famine what people forget is that the ottomans were paying barbary slavers to go to ireland and southern england and and wales and france and spain and Portugal and part of the Slavic nations and were taking white women, particularly of red and blonde hair, um, because they were the highest prized sex slaves. Now, obviously, it's a very dark period of history. However, yeah. there was Granny Mule, who or Grace O'Malley in the like, anglicization, um, was a very feared, very feared pirate. Like I've I've done a video on her. It's, it's take me forty minutes to literally discuss her. But basically, long story short, she had a pirate dad. She married a guy. She, he, um, she basically took over his pirate business and then he simped for her continually begging her to take him back. Like, because clearly, like, you know, as, as men do, when powerful women come along, we, 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 um, you know, all the feminists get mad and go, oh, well, we're powerful women and men get mad at us. I'm like, no, 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 no. Historically, men simp for the powerful women. You're just on Twitter all day. Um, so anyways, this guy simps for her. He comes back. She just takes over his pirate business. The English get really mad at her. She ends up going to the Queen, uh, to Queen Elizabeth I, and then Queen Elizabeth I says, oh yeah, cool, we're going to stop, like, in your bit of Ireland, you control it. Like, this is how amazing this woman was, but the pinnacle of her life, so she gives birth, now I don't know how true this story is, I have spoken to some historians and they contest it, um, but as we all know, historians are boring. Um, so, uh, the story is, she's giving birth on deck, or under deck in her, like, like pirate, you know, queen cabin. Gives birth. Here's gunshots going off because Barbary pilots are trying pirates are trying to raid her ship. She comes off with her newborn baby in one arm and a shotgun or a pistol in the other, depending on the version of the story you're hearing. She blows the brains out of the first pirate she sees, and she immediately is like, Who else? And she just starts murking all of these Barbary pilots. Pi Pilots, pirates. Sometimes she Pirate. leaves the baby in the cabin. Sometimes she's carrying it. I think more realistically, she probably leaves it in the cabin. Um, but yeah. like, and it probably also wasn't like immediately afterwards. It was probably like two or three days later. But you know, yeah, I like, but I do like the idea of like, like fifteen minutes after giving birth. Yeah, we're under attack, and then she just comes out like she's like choking a guy to death with the umbilical cord. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just one. It's one of my favorite stories of of Grace of Valley, and it goes into the the whole. And again, we we've actually managed to keep it kind of on the the sea at least. Ocean. No, but actually going back to pirates, the most successful pirate in history, I forget what her name was. Um, no, no, um, no. Uh, for, you know, I think her nickname was like the Zeng Widow. Um, she was a Chinese pirate, but she had like a fleet. Yeah, yeah, she had like a fleet of like something like fucking almost a thousand fucking ships, like thousands of sailors under her. Like went to war and won against the East India Company. Yeah, yeah, like um, that she deserves her own fucking episode because like there's way too much information to go on to oh, it all at once here. I, but I, but just just wave tops like um, it was one of those things where I think she started off as a hooker, yeah, married up, married one of the pirate fucking captains. He got yep. killed, and then she, it was just like, all right, so we're gonna have a twenty year long villain arc. She married her, so him and her had, like rescued a young orphan boy. When her husband died, she married the orphan boy. Like in the, I, I have done a video in the in the past, and it was hilarious because I was going along and I was really, really praising her, and then I got to be like, and then she introduced the tax, and I was like, you were doing so well. 
You were doing so well that you had to introduce a pirate tax. But she actually, she had a strong role of if... I mean, I could see what she was doing for the time and the framework she was in. So but now you're dropping out. Da, 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 can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, but um, I, 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 I was saying, I understood what she was doing for the time that she was in, but she, uh, like obviously now it would still, it wouldn't be progressive enough. Um, so the rule was, if you went, if her pirate crew went into a village, like if anyone in her fleet went into a village, um, and you um forced yourself on a woman you had to marry her to 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 keep her honest and i was like i understand the logic behind it in the framework yeah all, all the world fucking honor yeah. rules got it but you, the main thing because like if it's a but if the husband refused i, I think the rule was because it de again depends on like when it's when it's stories like this there's often variations so i believe that right. the rule was if the guy refused she could then kill him but also the money either way the woman gets all of his money anyways so like yeah. um and the woman didn't really like there was a rule for if the woman refused but she didn't really refuse because she's been kidnapped by pirates so if like you're brought to before ching shi and ching shi's like hey you're gonna marry each other or like i'm gonna you know shoot you i i can again understand why she would probably kill the woman because the woman goes back into society she's gonna be dishonored and so no one would like you know she's gonna live an awful life anyways again just shows how brutal the life was. But Ching Shi again is one of my favourites. Um, she beat the yeah. Chinese, the the Qing Navy. I think it was like twice. Um, she was hired in Vietnam. She helped with the civil war there. Like yeah, again, like you yeah. say, we could do a whole episode. Yeah, she could do her own whole fucking episode. Like, and and I wouldn't even say like during an episode of piracy because like a the golden age of piracy that was you know in they say it was in the Caribbean, but in all actuality, it was mostly up in the fucking Carolinas and Florida and shit. Um, yeah. But I wouldn't want to have her in there just because there's enough of her as there is the Caribbean piracy fucking thing. Yeah. So it's like, dude, like she should just get her own fucking episode. Like Mary Reed could get her own episode. And but like the female pirates are unironically probably more interesting than some of the globe. But and that's not me being like, oh woke. That's me being like the stories some of these women had, yeah. like are genuinely really fascinating yeah. well and, and it's funny because like in the caribbean uh in the you know uh, golden age of piracy like that was a really short time period like it was only like 30 or 40 years so almost all of the names that you could say and somebody like recognize so like mary reed calico jack friggin um william avery blackbeard they all knew each other yeah, yeah. And a lot of them served under like the gentleman pirate um, yeah, like a lot of people, a lot of people, because I didn't realize I'm um, playing it. Um, oh, um, on TikTok we got a uh, building a bed frame while listening to history nerds talk about nautical nonsense. Life is good. Fact, we're glad we could be of service. Um, also, um, it was also from um Nicholas Ritchie, I believe that's your name. I apologize, I've pronounced that wrong. Um, Anne Bonny is is a favorite female pirate of mine. Funnily enough, and but see, Anne Bonny, I think her best representation is probably in Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Same as the Gentleman Pirate, because I didn't realize the Gentleman Pirate was until I played Black Flag. Because like, I love yeah. seeing him and he's got his own boat. I do like the fact that you don't see him die. Because I like the last time you see him, like when he sails off and you're like, I didn't realize it. And then obviously when I started getting into the history, I was like, ah, oh, the last time you see him in Black Flag, that when he sails off that last time, he's actually sailing off to go die. Like, yeah, they did a really good job with Black Flag. Um, from what I understand, the other Assassin's Creed's games are good like this, but that's Black Flag's the only one I played because you know pirates. Yeah. But um, if you play that and then like read a book called like Under the Black Flag and then the Republic of Pirates, which are my two recommendations for hmm. pirate fucking history, um, that game is like, oh, okay, cool. I saw this in the game. I saw this in the game. I saw this in the game. That's neat. But I would suggest reading those two books first and then playing Black Flag. Be like, holy shit, you got this right, you got that right, you got this right. I mean, I don't know who this fucking Edward Kenway guy is, but like, neat insert. Um, the yeah. the issue with Assassin's Creed is up until Odyssey, everything had to be one hundred percent historically accurate. They were that dedicated to historical accuracy that they're currently rebuilding. I think they might be nearly done now. Um, when Notre Dame burnt down. Ubisoft put a half a million dollars towards rebuilding it, and then they gave nice. the scans because the, they'd gone in, taken photographs, and scanned the, the cathedral and the interior and the exterior to make it 100% accurate to the game. Right? That's much nice. dedication to accuracy. 
Now you can they they're releasing DLC packs where you can wear Charlemagne's armor and ride a polar bear. Or you can like dress up as Iron Man. And I'm sitting there and I'm like what happened? Like now you 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 play as gods and like stuff, and I'm like I get it, the Isu and the ancient people, and you're oh it's how a, a, a Viking would actually interpret an ancient advanced civilization. Yeah. But this is a this is a franchise that at one point removed a crossbow from a trailer because they didn't well, they wanted it to be more in, historically accurate to assassins. And I'm just like. Uh. Ah, uh, it's it's I I still play it, but it's it's how the mighty have fallen. Um, this is a direct message to Ubisoft: stop sexually harassing your staff and make good Assassin's Creed games. <laughs> That's actually yeah. a story. They the Ubisoft got done massively for sexual harassment. Um, I'd imagine. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Poseidon's running the company. Anyways, to finish off, I thought we would do a, a disturbing story because we like I thought we would link in nicely with Lady of Lake, Lake and stuff. Um, oh, the Ezio trilogy was amazing, but Black Flag was my favourite. I will agree. Brotherhood and Black Flag are my two favourite Assassin's Creed. Um, I've actually Black Flag is one of the few games I've basically a hundred percent because I very rarely hundred percent anything. But um, yeah. So the Kelpie, perhaps one of my favourite pieces of Celtic folklore. So the idea of a Kelpie is mostly would lure in children, so the children would see this pretty like like black horse just strutting along a lake and they'd go to pet it and they'd like get sucked in like because it had like super glue fur and then once you touch it drags you into the lake and then dep again depending on the story you either get dragged to the up the celtic other world which normally you transport through through water which again like, all all links around that the celts were really obsessed with stuff coming in and out of water kind of like i don't know alien spaceships um not to link it back to the aliens coming out of water earlier um we should do an entire episode on like ufo sightings as well i would i would love that. that's my favorite thing um but um so obviously either they take you to the other world or they, they drown the children the kelpie right. however would always have in human form would have a necklace because it would also transform into a human now the legend there is a woman would be travelling, she'd see a handsome man, he'd need he'd be need distress, and obviously she'd be like, Oh, a handsome man needs my help. I'm gonna go and help him and then he'd like seduce her, and then they'd make out and everything else. Um we've already been age restricted, but I don't want the live streams taken down. <laughs> but like you know what they they as Wendigoon would say, they kiffed and uh then once they were doing that, they would roll over and he would take her into the in the Celtic Hub world. Um, very similar sort of the changelings myth that happens later on in Irish folklore. Um, as as Chris, which funny fun fact, people forget that the changeling stuff actually appears around the time of Christianity, not um before it. People think it's like a, a much older thing. It's not. It's more of a Christianized thing because it's sort of demonizing the old pagan ways. But that's again an entire other video. But um, uh, so the same thing with woman. The guy would see a woman um by the lake, need help. They would kiff and then drag to the other world or drowned. Most likely drowned, given that the Kelpie is literally a predatory horse, so I feel like he was just drowning them to eat them, very similar to how alligators, you know, will drag you in and then they'll they don't act because people think alligators and crocodiles kill you outright. They don't. They they drown you. Um <clears throat> so if you can get like a necklace, if you can obtain the necklace, you can actually um, harness the power of the Kelpie, and there's actually stories where Kelpies were imprisoned by women in some cases, um, and men. It was actually this one, one, to one of the few times when I hear the stories, I hear um, the women actually capturing the Kelpie instead, because once you've got the necklace, the Kelpie has to do whatever you want it to do. It's like complete imprisonment. So you transform it into a horse, and it does the fields, and then you can transform it back into a man or a woman, and have your way with it. Um, gets quite messed up and you actually feel slightly bad for the Kelpie. Um, there's actually one story where the farmer, the the dad of the person who's imprisoned the Kelpie, I believe in this story it's a woman, um, like gives the necklace back and the Kelpie like just straight up kills the daughter because um, it's they imprisoned it. Um, but yeah, it's just that was the, the story I'd like, a very abbreviated version of the Kelpie mythos um, to end <clears> on. Because it's the same, again, it's the exact same like story style as the the, the the selkie and it's that same mysticism as the sirens and it's a, a little bit rapey like medusa and poseidon <laughs> yeah the, the, yeah fucking the ancient world's pretty uh brutal yeah. is the word we're 
Yes. Yeah, and I think what we've learned is even without mythology, um, any port in a storm very much framed true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, before we go, is there anything else you want to bring up? No, no, we've been bringing, we've been talking about sailors bringing it up, the you know, all episodes. So. <laughs> the book. Did you want to bring up the book? Oh, yeah, I, I got a new novel out. Um, it's called uh, Phantom in the Moonlight. It's it's the it's the tenth book in the Smoke Pit Fairy Tale series. Though the way I write these, I try to set them up to where like every third book you could start from there. So like if you started reading the first book, obviously you get it. If you start reading the series at the fourth book, it should be you should still be able to understand everything that's going on after that. And then same thing with what with the seventh book, and then um, the tenth book. I'm I'm it, you know it came out what last Friday. So it's been out for about a week. Um, and if you want to, you can start from there and it should make sense, which it might actually be. I'd be interested to see what someone thinks if they read the 10th one first and then the 11th and 12th when they come out next month and the month after that, and then went, went back. back and read the first nine out of like, just trying to figure out what the lore was. Uh, Nicholas Ritchie asks, where can I find all of these books? You can go to, the novel series is called Smoke Pit Fairy Tales, and you can either go to smokepitfairytales.com, which will redirect you to Amazon to get them off Amazon, or you, you could go to Barnes & Noble, but I would say don't do that because on Barnes & Noble, it's more expensive, and I get less of a cut. So it's better for both of us if you just get it from Amazon. And it's the, the links to the Smoke Pit Fairy Tales and all of Trip's other socials are linked in the description on YouTube. Um, it's the, the Smoke Pit Fairy Tales series is actually directly linked if I've put the description right, which I should have. Um, and last few comments before we head off, because we've been, I think this is actually the longest stream we've done. We've been going for, according to our stream, we've gone for nearly two hours. Um, hey, yeah. Uh, and that's and all we've been talking about is having intercourse with various different sea animals. Um, uh, that's bib uh, your least favorite YouTube channel says that's biblical. Uh, I ship it. I'm I'm assuming with the, the uh, there's a lot of things we've discussed that you can ship it with. I'm disturbing. Magnificent. Um, that's a step past trafficking. I think there might be high on something. Um, maybe Jesus was white. Census DNA test for Caesar and give it to the Mer people. Um, what belongs to me. okay don't understand what any of that was but thank you all guys for watching um uh thank you for joining us and we will be back on we as we've discussed we've actually discussed more ideas for the show as we've been doing the show um either i uh, will we'll figure out how long i i think maybe like every two weeks would probably be decent for this show maybe we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out yeah we'll figure out we'll, we'll figure out like if maybe once a month or whatever this is going to be like this is going to be our weird Bible. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Wendigoon and Lodge, we, we are coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, guys, um, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. All right. Adios. And make sure I've definitely ended the live streams before we... And on YouTube, end stream. There we go. Okay. And... All right, I'm, I'm going to take a post.